Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup, the business edition. These are recorded live Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to catch the show live. So today we are highlighting, uh, you can help support this channel by using a number of our affiliates. We do have Amazon, if you do any Amazon shopping, it's also at the top of the page up there. Uh, that'll just take you to the general Amazon uh, front page. We do have some web hosting sites, A2 Hosting, SiteGround, InMotion, and DigitalOcean. We have some VPNs, uh, Nord, and private internet access. And actually, I have some podcasting links here as well. If you're into podcasting, uh, these are podcast hosting or podcast statistics. These are what I use podcasting with uh, one of my other channels. use that frequently. But with that, let's go ahead and uh, jump on into the news. There's a new payment app for all you Gen Zers out there, you teenagers and just coming of age. We have a new app called Mido, and it, it uh, raises 2 million euros as seed money. And the task is to help get you so addicted to smartphone app payments so that you will be at for the rest of your life. life we need the, uh, the sheeple are coming in, man. Uh, the sheeple are coming. The sheeple are coming. So, of course, the idea here is it's like a texting. Ooh, we can send some money. Oh, mommy, 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 I need money. And this is supposed to help teach the Gen Zers how to handle their money, and it doesn't. All it does is it teaches you to spend more, to not consider what you're spending, and just to buy on the app, buy on the app, buy on the app, buy on the app. Guys, this is a bad way to shop. Use cash, a card only, rarely, take some time. I made a purchase on a card the other day um, that I spent three days thinking about. Um, and we'll talk about what that was in, in a, a future show. But the reality is these apps do not actually help you. Of course, the idea is, is it's a way to, it's basically a way to give your allowance to your kid through the app. And so you can top it off for your kid and then they can go spend money and then like, mommy, mommy, I'm out of money, I'm out of money. Where'd that money go? I don't know, I'm just out of money. Give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more on the text. And then they're just like, oh, here's your money, here's your money. It's supposed to teach you how to handle your money well. No, it doesn't. All it does is it makes it easy and convenient you to spend more money. You want your children to learn how to spend money. You know what, do what a friend of mine's parents did when he was 16 years old. He had to sit down with them when they were doing their budget meetings and he was the one that wrote out the checks. They would do their budget meetings, they would go over their finances, the 16 year old was in the house, they'd say, all right, here's the electric bill, here's this, here's this. They handed him the checkbook. He had to learn to write out the checks, give them to the parents to check over, then they would sign the checks and send them out. That is how you teach your kids how to money. How did that guy's life end up? Let me tell you how. He went off to college with no student loan debt. He graduated, got married, lived in his parents' basement for one year because they banked nearly every penny that they had and they went out and they dropped 75% cash down on a house at the age of 22 years old. That's how you make it with money. You got to sit down and learn how to budget. You don't attach it to apps. You don't give them all these debit and credit cards. You teach them how to actually handle money. And then you teach them what's the importance between a real expenditure and blow money. And teach them if you're going to do a little bit of blow money, just do a little bit of blow money. A little bit of blow money. All right. So Mido's coming out. I will advise you to steer clear. So lawsuit, AT&T pulled the Wells Fargo. They basically signed up a whole lot of customers for DirecTV, excuse me, DirecTV Now without their knowledge. Or was it AT&T TV or AT&T TV Now? Or is it TT&T, AT&T, TT, ATT, Now, TT, Now, ATT? I don't know. But anyway, uh, in this new lawsuit, AT&T apparently signed up customers for DirecTV Now without their knowledge. Same thing Wells Fargo did, uh, gathering a bunch of these datas and then creating bank accounts with all these datas to please their managers. Very similar situation. The people were required to have a certain quota of people signing up for DirecTV now. So, you know, to meet their quota, they don't oh, know this guy. You just check off the box. Guy creates the new AT&T account. He says, no, I don't want that DirecTV now stuff. And they went ahead and added it anyway. And guess what? Since nobody checks their bills anyway, they just put it on auto pay and don't check their bills and it's always paid for it's always paid for no one ever checks the bills and they're paying for all this and what i find the most hilarious is this is not the customers coming back and it's at&t this is the investors for at&t coming back 
They're saying, you guys fudged the DirecTV numbers. Now the people who did figure out they're on DirecTV now and did not want DirecTV now are all canceling en masse. And this caused the numbers to fall down. And now the investors are pissed off at AT&T because of all this. I... <sighs> Yeah, you know, this is almost why I think that our current world of all these major mergers is a bad deal. Like, okay, it was it was a much better world when DirecTV was its own company and AT&T was its own company and Netflix is its own company. But now when T-Mobile and Netflix have this deal together and AT&T owns DirecTV and Verizon works with Apple Music and all this kind of crap, we're getting all sorts of weird shenanigans, especially when they start putting sales numbers on the back end. Maybe at some point in time, we can actually get to the point where one company does one service. And no, you're not allowed to merge and sh package and discount and all this other crap. You want to give me a discount on DirecTV now crap? Give me a coupon code to go to their business and use it. There you go. There's how you pull it off. I just find this, this is just like, actually, I got to say that I at one point in time considered switching to AT&T. But because they had such a close connection to DirecTV now, who irritated me long ago, not I never used their service, but they, they started calling and calling and calling and calling and calling. I just got so mad at them. I'm just like, you know what? You guys are affiliated with DirecTV. And eh, now I'm going to walk away. Never, you know, not going to bother. And so this is the type of stuff, you know, we need to, we need to do away with all these businesses having multiple different things. I should have one business engages in one service and that's it. One business, one service, that's it. And if you sign me up for a service, I didn't, I want your life. I want to come back for that little puny little guy and his boss. Let's get back 10 times what I paid for the company. I came in there to buy a cell phone service, not your crappy streaming junk. That's my thoughts on that. Hope I didn't make myself unclear. What are your thoughts on all this? <laughs> Let me know down below. <laughs> now, right when we uh, just discussed in the privacy section of the news tonight as I'm recording this, um, the Princeton researchers came out looking at these set bo set-top box streaming things like Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And what they did is they looked at how many trackers and ad trackers and data trackers are put into there. Well, this is interesting because now Comcast is, they're so concerned with people, they're so concerned with people cutting the cord and not getting these packages anymore. They're like, oh man, we, what do we do? Well, they're starting to build up and they're going to be releasing their own streaming service soon. But for the internet only customers uh, like me, oh Lord, they're starting to offer this Xfinity Flex. They're going to give it, I think they're going to give it for free initially. This article is not particularly clear. Uh, this is actually the press release, it's not particularly clear, but the idea is they want to give a streaming box to the people who only have the internet uh, in their plans so that they can basically get on and have this little set top box thing. So let's go ahead and flip through this. Sure, let's go ahead and agree with my web browser that clears cookies every time I close. All right, uh, 10,000 free movies and shows, a 4K UHD streaming device. Rem uh, oh, oh, and by the way, with award-winning voice remote free for internet only customers uh, no I'm sorry if you send me one of these I will decline your free gift thank you very much easily navigate top streaming apps including Netflix Amazon Prime Video HBO Showtime YouTube and Amazon Music Pandora iHeartRadio and Peacock and Hulu oh boy Peacock, by the way, that's NBC's. Guys, is anybody keeping a list of how many um, video streaming services we have now? We've got to be up to about 25 at this point. Features easy to access Comcast, home Wi-Fi, mobile, security, and home automation services. <laughs> yeah, I only use Comcast Internet because I don't have a choice. Like, I would willingly use you for anything I did have a choice. Ooh, download the press release now. So they are giving it... Uh, they're basically giving the box out, and I believe that they will have upgraded services. They're not listing it here. Uh, Xfinity Flexbox is included along with Xfinity Voice Remote at no additional cost as part of Xfinity 
internet only subscription. Additional boxes will be available to lease for $5 a month per box. So let me have two boxes per customer. So they'll give you one and you can get them for $5 a month more. Now the idea, the reason they want you to have these is that you through this box you can order movies. You can rent movies through the box, which admittedly renting a movie through the box is not a bad deal, except I can go into Amazon without Amazon Prime using my Amazon Cash account, paying cash for it, and I can rent a movie on Amazon. When I rent it, I think I have either 24 or 48 hours from the time I rent it. I think I have 48 hours from the time I rent it to start watching it, and then once I start watching it, I can watch it as many times as I can in that 24-hour period of time. So I can already rent movies from Amazon with out this track box tra tracking device and I can do it with cash through Amazon. That, by the way, is why I still use Amazon. Despite, yes, there's some limitations. Yes, the company does irritate me, but they actually have options that I can do with my cash account so I don't have to give them access to cards and I don't have to have a Prime account and I can just grab it and stream it right from my device. That's perfectly okay because eh, I watch most movies in my office anyway and I can always hook up a computer to my TV if I need to do that. So let me know your thoughts on Xfinity and their junk and do you have this, do you want this, do you not want this? Let me know in the comments down below. And finally, onto our feature article tonight, Uber is now using your smartphone and your driver's smartphone uh, the sensors inside of them to detect vehicle crashes. If it senses that your your phone sensors went all bleez, then it's going to give you a little pop-up on your app that's like, we sense the possible accident. Go click here if everyone's okay. Click here, dial 911, click here, click here. And this is just like, uh, I get that this is an okay thing, um, but at the same token, it's, I don't really want the app to constantly be looking at every one of my sensors. I think they said primarily it uses the driver sensor. So yeah, it can be a good thing to, to call in and check and give you a quick uh, you know, 911 button or whatever. So I don't really think I'm criticizing this necessarily. If you're already using Uber, you know, good luck with you. Um, I'm not going to be a customer of theirs. I don't recommend it. Um, so that's actually... Uh, I'm not going to come down and say this is a bad thing. I think it's a little weird. and uh, But at the same token, you know, it, it can be helpful in, in, in times of an accident. You know, it could be helpful if there's an accident and everyone is unconscious for whatever reason and, and the app just says, hey, you know, we've popped this up. we do not not getting any response, no driver response, no passenger response, deploy somebody. That's actually an okay thing. Um, and the fact that you don't actually have to pay extra for that, hey, I'm down with that. Uh, but anyway, uh, Uber is checking up on us. Let me know your thoughts about that. Do you uh, drive Uber? Do you use Uber? Do you have a concern with this or not have a concern with this? Let me know in the comments down below.